Tarsarm Garoni and Bilisha Le Play, a Tasulam, Gnak for Nulesh, Erendari came. Billa Quimshu Katan, a Credim Fain, Gul Taravamur Bantlesh. Bunnyu and Hiadvank in Aiding, a Shachtig Ochto Do, a Zohin, Tadania Kurudi Luchfer, a Dashke, a Mankane. To Quidwa Tashke no Boske, Tertalam, a Golawad Shear. Now, we will see the same thing. The same thing is that 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 So, the same thing is that 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 the same thing is Gorlobiot. I guess Murrafedra Shiniana, Kurra Fogra Pibliamak, by Shishinna Fog account JV, a lot of Unedi. Axagas could depend on Shiniluk, and Shin Osklo from the Buske. I guess Fair for Kerta Anto, I guess Kurfer and Tard Museum at Anolas, I guess Sukrio Shiotan, no, then a Shiotan Kin and Kedis Karta Yuna, Lenitashki and Karti the Hunel. No gani do kuna, like as mas far mas karti do kuna gan start. Kenait i karti do kuna to dan na nashunta to nar museum to lau na nashunta no way na itela. Rolo wan gagahe me be mu kader na gaben sokro tan gan nosko from the buske ishina dasso as kerde ishina kilian ishina am buske is footish here nar foskliyev. So, if we ask the Oscar to be the same as 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 a Tarbon, the Kuibliana, Hanahain. I'm delighted that this bill has been selected for second stage debate tonight, and I hope that it will be passed on second stage and proceed to committee. It's a very comprehensive bill with six parts and 30 sections, and has been five years in gestation. I'd like to thank my committees on the Joint Erastus Committee on Social Protection, Rural and Community Development and the Islands for their interest in this bill and for their support in the work I was doing. And I'd particularly like to thank the staff in the Office of Parliamentary Legal Advisors, Neil McKenna and Owen Garvey, for all the detailed work they have done in looking at the legislation that exists already and in assisting in drafting this bill. That said, any errors or omissions, I take full responsibility for. I'd also like to thank the person who does not wish to be named, who suggested to me the first time that this bill be developed. Now, I think it's worthwhile looking exactly how long the banks have existed and boxes going into the banks have existed. So the first bank, the Bank of Ireland, was established by Act of Parliament in 1782. AIB, in its original form, dates back to the founding of the Provincial Bank in 1825. And I understand that both have had safekeeping facilities for their clients from the outset. And today, both institutions and other banks retain all the property that has been abandoned over the years. Because I think it is important to stress again and again in this, the property is not the bank's property. They're only safe keepers of the property. The property rightfully belongs to the people who put it there. Obviously, there's nobody alive now that put it there in 1784. The vast majority of this property was deposited in a sealed state. In other words, people came in with trunks, with envelopes, with chests, with safes, every kind of thing. So I think some people have a vision of neat rows of 
boxes with keys on them that you put it into. But in a lot of cases, they actually brought in, as I said, the receptacle sealed that these deposits are in. And as a result, the contents are unknown. I understand that for a variety of reasons over the years, that some boxes had to be opened and that a sample of it, the things that were found were cash, weapons and other war memorabilia, antiques, paintings, jewellery, title deeds, wills and other papers. I even heard a suggestion that there could be a billion euros worth, but I don't think this is about money, this is about artefacts, this is about history, this is about things being made available. I think that that's what we're talking about. It's not so much the actual monetary value, but I, I would, I, I, it has been suggested to me that the monetary value alone would be quite significant. Now, we have to be very careful, and this is what the bill is about and how you would do this. So the first thing that would be done is to create a register of property deposits in banks. The second thing is to identify the safekeeping property deposits where the records are sufficient to identify a living or beneficial owner, in other words, the inheritor, uh, starting with the oldest deposits first. And obviously you would expect they would be the hardest one to link with a present living person. Failing that, then you have to advertise with the information available, and that's very comprehensive, what information is available. Effectively, it's everything the bank knows. And therefore, in that way, you see, does an owner come forward? In the event of no owner coming forward, then the boxes are open to see what's inside. And the director of the National Museum will then examine any unclaimed property, and they can designate somebody to do it on their behalf, and decide whether it should be retained by it or by certain other bodies, for example, the National Gallery or the National Library or so on, and put it on display. Now, in the event of something, something going on display and somebody finding out it was theirs, they could claim it back, and I'll come to that in a minute. The bill also provides for the transfer of unclaimed funds to the dormant accounts. All safe deposits will be recorded in chronological order back to the beginning of the banks in the 18th century, and no safe deposit, safe deposit held by a bank for less than 80 years will be opened. 80 years, it's, you always, when you put a number in a bill, you have to have a justification and a rationale, but at the same time, it's always slightly arbitrary. And 80 years was decided to be appropriate, as very few people under 20 years of age lodge, lodge safe deposit boxes in banks. Uh, and therefore, if 80 years your cut-off point, to add 20 to that, the minimum age people would be before you'd opened them would be over 100 years of age, and that's at a very, very minimum. Uh, now, the bill is broken into six parts. Part one, preliminary and general. This part includes the purpose of the bill, the short title, title interpretation section, expenses and regulations and offences under the bill. Part two, this part provides for the registration, notification and examination of historical property deposits. This part imposes certain obligations on institutions in relation to the registration of information relating to deposit of property the identification and notification of depositors of unclaimed property, and the examination of unclaimed property. Part 3 provides for retention by the state of unclaimed property. This part makes provision for the notification of the director of the National Museum that unclaimed property is held by an institution, for the examination of unclaimed property by the director, and for the retention of certain items of property that are, are of historical, archaeological or artistic importance by the state. This part also provides for claims for return of property that is retained by the state. And in certain circumstances, it also allows for the acquisition by the state of certain property in, which, in respect to which such a claim uh, for return is made. This part, this part four, provides for notification of other persons for the performance of statutory functions. This would be the various agencies and so on. Part five provides for the disposal of unclaimed property and the transfer of unclaimed monies to the Dormant Accounts Fund and claims for the repayment of unclaimed monies. Part six 
provides for various miscellaneous matters, including compliance with the provisions of the Bill and the powers of the Central Bank for the purposes of supervising compliance with the provision of the Bill. The schedule to the Bill provides for the phased periods during which certain historic unclaimed property must be examined for the purposes of Section 9. Uh, and that's very useful, and we have put inner limits and outer limits, because one of the problems we often find that things run a lot longer than we as legislators had intended they would. Uh, I'd be very interested to get the feedback from the House. Uh, I would hope that the fact that there's very few of us here is a sign that everybody agrees with this and that there's no contest or nobody objecting to any aspect of it. Uh, and I hope that this bill can now go to committee stage where all of the hard work can be examined in detail and where the minister uh, will be able to come in and go through it line by line. I think that there are an awful lot of people who would be very curious to find out what people were hiding back in 1784 or 85 or even in 1800 or even 1825. You might remember at the year of the millennium, there was this habit of putting the time capsule in the ground and saying, you know, putting out the things that were relevant to the year 2000 and saying in 50 or 100 years' time, people can dig these up and find out what these time, time capsules were holding. These safe deposit boxes, in my view, are likely to be an absolutely fascinating time capsule into a world that we don't inhabit, but what's the real world for the people who lived at that time. So I recommend this bill to the House, and I hope that the Minister will be equally positive.